All mankind is of one author and is one volume. When one man dies, one chapter is not torn out of the book, but translated into a better language, and every chapter must be so translated. No man is an island entire of itself. Every man is a piece of the continent, a part of the main. John Donne. I was an English teacher for most of my working life. I love poetry. John Donne was the person that I studied in graduate school. And after teaching it for many years, the, the oomph, the joy, wasn't there. It was a more intellectual process of thinking of discussion questions. And I was looking for something that would satisfy the non-intellectual, emotional, intuitive side. I started making art, and I don't know how to paint or do any of those things you learn in art school. And I love the idea of taking things that other people would never think of as an art material and using it to bring pleasure or especially disturb, rock your boat a little so that you're really seeing something anew and fresh. Louise may not have gone to art school, but that sure hasn't held back her relentless creativity. One large piece in the show is made from tea bags that were soaked in encaustic wax to create a beautiful and richly textured work. So I dumped out the tea, there's still some tea left, and I opened up the flow-through bags, and so this is the size of a flow-through that's opened up. This is like 70 tea bags. I learned how to use encaustic. I went to um, r and in, in New York. They're the Jasper John Spices encaustic there, and they're it. This is different because it's flexible, whereas usually we have encaustic and it's very much on a plywood piece, very solid piece, and I wanted flexible wax. But most of this show is comprised of small collages on handmade paper. A friend who started Women's Studio Workshop in upstate New York uh, makes handmade paper and brought these as a present for me, 36 pieces. And the paper's made out of abaca plant. She beat it into a pulp and made the paper and then she put on four thick pieces of grass to form a sort of a square and then she dipped it again and put on a very thin layer of pulp to keep the grass from coming off. And I love the paper but I didn't really know what I was going to do with it. And then I had a residency in China, and I came home, I looked at this paper, I went, oh my gosh, these are Chinese characters. So I have to have you look at my shoes. These are men's Chinese shoes. Great shoes and great socks. It turns out that the color of those socks is particularly meaningful in China. Red, for thousands of years, has been a superstitious color, bringing happiness, bringing good luck. You'd never see a new house without some red in front of it, or a traditional Chinese wedding. You wear a red bridal dress and that kind of thing. So Louise decided that each of these 36 pieces of paper could become a collage and that each one would have some red in it. The show's playing with the idea of how many ways I could explore red. Some of them have a teeny little bit of red in, and there are many colors of red, and there are many kinds of good fortune and levels of happiness. Perhaps because of her interest in poetry, Louise uses typographical elements in many of her pieces. Alice Thorpe, a New Yorker who collects Louise's work told me about one very interesting use of text. Here she uses words and some of her paint, uh, these paintings have her father's diary from when he was a young boy and he was bird watching and she has copied those and then put them into the picture. You don't know why, but other people respond. 
So I know that my father's teenage bird book is over there, you know, where he's recording what birds he's seen. Even if I don't tell somebody, somehow it's the handwriting or the paper or maybe a year. There's something about the text. A lot of people like my work because of the text in it. They, I also think it's a way in for people. It's familiar. And abstract art is hard for some people. And, you know, words is, is a way that they can understand, or start to understand. Artists' books are something I learned at Women's Studio Workshop, the people who made the handmade paper for this show. As a former English teacher, when you look at a book, you don't notice the book. And when you make an artist's book, it's all about the book. So you're, it's a completely different thing. And also, it's kind of kill the gallery and the museum because it's not this precious item on the wall. It's something you're invited to pick up and page through and be involved. Page it at your own pace. And it's familiar. It's a familiar object. For me, artist books are usually something that I do as a break after, you know, I have a big show and then I take it down and sort of like, and then I make a couple books. And I, I love making books. I, I learned how to book bind and it's very, it's a process, it's very physical and it's fun. I have to say that I found Louise's show remarkably beautiful. I would urge you to go see it. And if you do, Ask Richard to let you see one of her books. But if you choose not to go, Louise's friend, John Dunn, has a little message for you. And perchance, I may think myself so much better than I am, as that they who are about me may have caused it to toll for me, and therefore never send to know for whom the bell tolls, it tolls for thee. And it's wonderful if someone else feels that. You know, it's just like, wow, this is sort of universal.